Lemon. Lemon. Ah, <laughs> nice. Who has the key? <laughs> okay. So it's a very old weapon. We're Vans Without Borders, humanitarian team who aid to provide short-term aid to communities cut off from other help. So we go to places no one else goes to, and we make sure that no one goes hungry in Ukraine. My name's Jack and I'm the founder. From Britain, we have Fenton, our favorite Ukrainian soldier Vova, all the way from the United States, Nick, and our Aussie cousin, Tony. G'day. It's pretty, pretty charged. We've got Steve from Britain, Justin from Britain, Paul, who's 75 years old and it's incredibly come out from America. We've got Miles from France, Elijah from the UK, and Darren from Wales. What is that? So we're on our way to the front line in Donetsk, Donetsk Oblast, about 20 kilometers from the Russian soldiers. So we're going to supply a stinger unit and engineers with essential supplies. So we have things like food, water, and wet wipes. Wet wipes are very important because there's no running water at the front, so these guys use that to shower with. And some pasta. So we're just giving some supplies to soldiers at the front, so different medications and some food. So we ended up staying at an army base in Donetsk. It wasn't deliberate, unfortunately, because a bridge was blown up. We were delayed by three, four hours. So when we got there, I spoke to Randy. I knew Randy from before. I said, look, we've got loads of food for you. We must have given them about 500 ration packs for their units. And they were incredibly happy to let us stay. And they asked us, well, do you want to see some of our kit? And you know, I think we were just big kids. And we were like, yeah. And it was immense seeing their, their weapon caches and everything. This is the ammo store in here. These little grenades in here. I don't know what they are. Just loads and loads of bullets. And this, <laughs> this is all the ammo for a team of maybe 20 Mexicans. Limon. Limon. Lemon. Ah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Russian. Cool. Ah, it's a Russian weapon. What's in um, these ones? Dim. Uh, ah, bombs. <laughs> RPG. <laughs> Very cool. RPG. This is where they are, man. Look at this. No. Oh my goodness. Where the f is that? I still have this stuff, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's taller than you, but. <laughs> <laughs> so this is shrapnel wounds that happened in uh, March. March. So this chap's showing us where the um, shrapnel was in his back. If you can yeah. see it. Right there, yeah. They have more artillery, more guns, more people, but uh, they have no uh, no idea for what they are on this start. This started this war, but we have the task to protect our, our country. And uh, I think that uh, that we will, for sure, we will win. Randy's taking me to where him and his guys every day go up with their anti-aircraft weaponry and wait for Russian aircraft to attempt to attack Ukrainian tanks and positions. What's your job out here? Air defense team. We uh, protect the population and the village against the possible attack of helicopters or air forces. So this is where you stay every day? Yeah, please. Ah, uh, is that a tank? Yeah. Well hidden. <laughs> yeah, we're awesome. Thank you, Sam. Randy, how do you think Russia is doing in the war so far? For Russians, uh, we will stand against them yes, and we will win for sure. Do we have the task to protect our, our country? The information it is possible for the aircraft or helicopter to go over there and start to 
see it's like this so no chance for Russia to win this war it's fast it's heavier this thing is heavier than than Stinger in total it's about 20 kilos this is Igla Igla is one of the Ukrainian weapon but it's heavier than Stinger in four kilos I think uh, before we have the point here every morning we have to have a smile and go here and there in the morning and the evening so but anyway it's good training for, <laughs> for your muscle of your legs the hand is on our side yeah. Moscow supplies for civilians, so the civilians there are completely cut off. There's no shops, and the few shops that are open, and you're talking an hour drive away from this place, so they have to rely on what they can grow to sustain themselves. So we're going in just to drop as many supplies as we can to the people and help ease the pressure on their lives. I feel sorry for his kids and that. Mm. All this bombing among them is ridiculous. It's just non stop, isn't it? Well. So while we were out delivering to the people, we noticed there's lots of tanks in the trees. We stopped by one to say hi to the crew, and it was an APC which has been on patrol from Kharkiv down to Donetsk and heading back up. Uh, started chatting to the guys, gave them some ration packs and some med kits, and they very kindly let us have a look at their APC as well. I think they're very excited to show it off. It's not armed vehicle, is it? It's got a turret on the front. It's got a turret. Uh, who has the key? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 150 rivers now for uh, one year. Third party fire and theft. <laughs> I'm not sure who's going to steal it. Maybe the Russians, but I don't think the Ukrainians will let them. That time it does exist then. <laughs> <laughs> So Fenton, when you're in Donetsk, we had a tank column go by, what happened there? Um, so two of the soldiers took me out uh, whilst everyone was having some food, um, showing me some of the uh, close calls that they've had. Um, had a couple of bombs dropped clo quite close to the base where we were staying, um, and also one that had been shot down uh, from one of their air defence systems. Um, and yeah, as we were there in the sunflower field, uh, looking at some of the scatter shrapnel, yeah, we saw a column of tanks, APCs, going past, there must have been at least 10 there. Um, they were waving at us, um, and then the middle of the tank crew kind of stopped, looked at us, um, was kind of confused why there were people stood in the middle of this field. Uh, so the soldiers there had to tell them that they were Ukrainian, um, and we were okay. I think they were a bit twitchy. <laughs> so one thing they don't tell you before you come to Ukraine is how many mosquitoes there are. So this is just from last night. We've all been bitten all over our feet. Great. We've just entered Kharkiv. It's been very heavily bombed since the Ukrainians destroyed the Russian airbase in Crimea and in retaliation. So we've got a van full of food. We've got another van full of food and a car full of stuff as well. And we're looking to try and supply people as much as possible. Uh, they're anticipating the Russians are going to invade this area shortly. So we want to make sure people have enough supplies to survive during that potential invasion. If not, stock them up for winter because it's going to be a very hard winter here. So we had a massive box of medication, but they see it's going down massively. So it's splitting paracetamol packs to ensure that everyone gets some. More and more people keep turning up. They're desperate even just for one strip of paracetamol. But we can only do what we can. It's, there's no, no chance to resupply in Kharkiv. It's only what we could bring. They got donated in Britain. So she, it's quite an elderly community here. So things like incontinence pads are incredibly important, but very hard to come by. They're completely sold out in the city. How are you feeling? <laughs> 
So we've been here about 40 minutes and the queue just doesn't go down. You know, there must be thousands of people living here and as word spreads, all come and come. You know, we've got a lot of food for everyone. And you know, I hope we're gonna feed this whole community. So the city's being heavily bombed at the moment, but we've managed to find a British pub, which is open in Kharkiv. So we just come to this English pub to enjoy a nice English meal, but the Russians have decided to bomb us. It's not very cool, is it? Couldn't even let us have our burger and chips. In peace. How rude. Not very British. Not very British.